Bolts Nation, welcome back to another episode of the Bolts Block Party, powered by our friends at High I am your host, Greg Wolf, joined by the always insightful Braden Coburn. And uh, welcome into another episode. Super excited for our guest this morning. Uh, he's probably one of the most, um, I would say, well-known, uh, storied, history players in our Tampa Bay Lightning franchise. Vinny LeCavier joins us. The man's number's in the rafters. Vinny, thank you for taking time this morning. No uh, we know you're a, you're a busy guy. Um, but we want to kind of take a trip with our fans this morning and, uh, and go over some of the, uh, the history uh, of you as a Tampa Bay Lightning player, uh, but go back to where it all began, um, some of the fun stuff that got you um, to the Hall of Fame uh, caliber because you are a part of the first inaugural Lightning Hall of Fame class with uh, Marty and uh, the great Phil Esposito. So uh, we want to talk about all that stuff, Vinny, today, but let's take it back, Kobe, and talk about some of the statistics and where Vinny currently still stands uh, in the record books because, you know, we have a lot of new fans, right? Yeah, so yeah. we're always building. He the, had a uh, few goals. He had, he had a, few had a goals. couple goals. So <laughs> for our fans, let's just kind of rewind uh, the resume of Vinny LeCavier, the number one overall draft pick by the Tampa Bay Lightning back in 1998. Uh, 2004 Stanley Cup champ, Maurice Rocket Richard winner back in 07, which is for the NHL's leading goal scorer. Uh, like we said, first inaugural class of the Lightning Hall of Fame last year with Phil and Marty. Vinny ranks third all-time in Lightning history for points with 874 behind Stammer. He made sure to tell us to tell you that any of these stats you're behind Stammer. He wanted us I to know. tell you that. I know. <laughs> Damn Stammer. <laughs> Damn Stammer. Um, so 874 points behind Stammer, who's at 1,087 in that range. And Marty's at 953. You rank second for goals with 383 behind Stammer. He's got 530 currently. You're fourth in assists behind Marty Stammer and Hetty. Third in franchise history for penalty minutes behind Chris Gratton and Pavel Kubina. Wow. Second, I know. Dirty, <laughs> dirty, right. dirty guy. All right. He's All right. a dirty like player. That. Dirty. So, yeah, uh, third in franchise history for that. Um, second for power play goals behind Stammer. Third for power play scoring behind Stammer and Marty. A uh, franchise leader for shots with 3,166. But Stammer, it's just a couple. Probably by the time this episode airs, Stammer will pass you uh, for franchise leader in games played. And then a very important stat, which was back in 07, became the first Lightning player to record 50 goals in a season. <sighs> That's a lot. It's a long resume. So you are a legend when it comes to the Tampa Bay Lightning folklore. And uh, it's amazing to, to have you here with us. But... Kobe and I want to go back to the very beginning, where it all started, the boarding school. Take, yeah, like, take well, us there. Like. Growing up, growing up. Yeah. In, growing up in Montreal, um, you started hockey. How did you get into hockey? Was yeah, your yeah, your, your parents, start. your dad? Who, who? Um, that, I mean, yes, my dad, but I think it's, you know, you know how it is, but it's obviously the culture. And, yep. and, and uh, in Canada, I mean, you go to school, and if you – it's kind of weird if you don't play hockey. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, uh, but my dad brought me, he was a firefighter and uh, he brought me to the rink, like at starting at two and a half years old, three years old, like five days a week. So like by the time I was five, like I had, I don't know how many hours, but. <laughs> you, you've been on the ice. So was he a hockey player? Yeah, he played, okay. he played uh, junior hockey until he was 19. And obviously like, you know, you kind of have to make a choice. Am sure. I going to go to work or keep grinding and, and not really go anywhere? So. Uh, but he was, uh, yeah, he was a defenseman, just like my brother, uh, who, he, you know, he played college hockey. So, uh, but yeah, I was at the rink, like, and I loved it. Like, sure. I was, like, passionate and, like, it wasn't forced. Uh, you know, I wanted to be there for hours. Like, he would drop me off. I would go out, like, the outside rink. Sometimes he would drop me off. We had, uh, that's maybe a little bit later. I was, like, maybe nine or ten. But okay. I was the only guy, like, there was, like, this much snow. And uh, I would. You know, I would I would shovel like a little square and I would just like stick handle for like hours. You would like leave or stay for a bit or then leave and come back. You had this fur like fur hat and you just like <laughs> just watch me from the like, old far beaver away. pelt. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so from far away. So anyways, I was uh I went kind of forward there, but uh I started very young and um and, uh, but I, I, I loved it. I loved it. The boarding school. Enough. No, so Vinny, so you're playing you're playing. You you obviously are, have been very talented at this game for a long time. When did the whispers and when did the the talk of Vinny LeCavier, hockey prodigy? When did that? When did you start to hear that? Uh, so 
so so I started okay so it's kind of um, I guess when I was young, I was, I was, you know, I was seven years old playing against 10 year olds. So, uh, you know, there's like these little articles in the paper, but when you're that young, you don't realize it. So I always say, like, people ask me that question. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I started thinking the NHL when I was like 16, because okay. that's when, you know, the draft list came out, but I feel like I never, uh, they were talking about it. You know, the, the Pee Wee Quebec, that's a big, yep. big tournament. And even before that, but, uh, <sighs> you know, I was just a kid playing hockey. I don't, I don't. I don't care. I don't, right. I don't, uh, uh, but you know, they were talking about me, but I didn't know. You, you never really know, um, you know, how good you, you are or not, or, you know what I mean? Like yeah. I was just a kid playing hockey. So basically, uh, I would say again, it was, it was 60 when I realized that maybe I'll make it the NHL or even the thought of it, uh, that'd be good enough to do it. Sure. Uh, but you know, when I was young, there, there were talks and you know articles and stuff like that in the papers all right so i mean but you went to a, a boarding school and i yeah. know kobe you went to that same school same and, school. I mean, was that school specifically to breed hockey players well I mean, so it's it's uh, athel murray college in wilcox saskatchewan Notre Dame in wilcox saskatchewan yep. the, the town is Vinny. like what is it it's like the student body is like 300 to uh, 400 I think kids it's like 400 kids and like 200 250 people living in the town yeah so With if you look out in it. any direction, you're just going to be wheat fields for okay. miles and miles and miles until you reach Re- 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 Regina, which is about, yeah. you know, like I 35 minutes I could see the lights away. at night. I'd go to bed. I was in uh, one of the dorms, uh, Edith Hall, the first year. Edith Hall. My bunk. Grade nine rats. <laughs> yeah. The, my bunk was the second floor, and I would go to bed at night listening to music, and I would just look outside. I could see the lights 37 kilometers away, which is probably around 25 miles. Wow. You could just see the That's lights. So, because it's so, it was so flat. Wow. But I know that was a side note. But yeah. So how did you end up there? And like, well, that was a big decision by your parents. Yeah. You know, they're, yeah, they're, you're going uh, from Montreal to somewhere in the middle of Saskatchewan. Yeah. I mean, Montreal was great for hockey. Right. I mean, we had that, you know, great, great teams, great competition. But my, uh, my dad uh, sent my brother there f- five years earlier and uh, more to learn English. Uh, and uh, it was a it was a big uh, I don't know how to say it but like a lot of kids from that school went to uh, got recruited for college right right which nobody in Quebec did we all played major junior it's it's a junior hockey uh, so to go college in, in in the United States was kind of like a different route back then especially sure. for my brother uh, but you know my dad wanted us to, to have an education and, yep. and and have the opportunity to do that so he sent my brother there and then so. When I was nine years old, my brother was 14. My dad's like, you're going there in five years. So like, get ready. ready. <laughs> <laughs> so when I got there, I was like, I was, I didn't know what to expect. Sure. But, uh, and I was shocked when I got there. But um, I and kind of always was, knew. What age was that that you finally went there? 14? 14, 14, 14, yeah, grade nine. So Notre Dame has an impressive roster yeah. of, of NHL players, of NHL alumni, including yourself. Uh, yourself um, yourself. Brady Coburn. <laughs> Wendell Clark, Rob Brindamore, Curtis Joseph, kind of yeah. guys Brad, that Brad were in Richards. that era. Brad, Brad Richards. Richards. So, and then recently guys like Jordan Eberle, Tyler Myers, Morgan Riley, John Cooper went there. So, so what is it about this? What is it about this particular school? I mean, is it, like you said, is it the education factor, but is it also the fact that they're breeding hockey? Like, do you eat, breathe and sleep hockey at this, at this school? Or is like, what? I don't think they overdo it. Like no. we skated maybe, maybe five days. Like you hear about academies now, like they, they do like a hundred games and like they <laughs> skates 10 times a week right. and like they kind of overdo it. No, I thought it was just a well-balanced, uh, it was just, it's just a good culture, good hockey culture, good, uh, living culture. And sure. I think people went there, uh, you know, you get the dorms, you have the, uh, just a, it's a different, uh, you grow up quicker, you get mature and obviously you learn. it's, it wasn't like a military school. Yeah. But they made you do a lot of, the you become very stuff. independent. You become very <laughs> yeah, independent. Sure. So <laughs> did, how was your English when you went there? It was fine because my brother, after one year there, so I was nine mm-hmm. or grade four, after one year, there's like a loophole that in Quebec, because uh, in Quebec, you're not allowed, if you're French, you're not allowed to go to an English school. So Why? Th- it's just they want to keep the French culture, okay. so you're just not allowed. Got it. But there's a loophole that if a sibling went outside the, uh, the province, then your brother was allowed to go to English school. So in grade five, I was the only French guy uh in an english school wow. so i i I, um, I started then to speak english but right. obviously i wasn't great i mean even now i kind of you know i got the yeah, accent you, you, but, you're uh, not great yeah <laughs> <laughs> but you know i started writing in grade five so when i got to notre dame i was uh i was okay yes. at that point so you meet brad richards 
He was uh, a f- Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, talk, talk to us about Brad Richards. Yeah. Like, how did you? He was literally the first guy I met in the dorm. Like, he was like, you walk in and you go to. There's a list of the the, the rooms, yep. and he was the first person I walked in. I'm like, hey, I'm Vinny. Hey, I'm Brad. Or I was, I was, I was Vincent back then. They called mm. me Vinny after, but then during the year they called me Skinny Vinny because like <laughs> I was like 150 pounds. <laughs> but uh, Vinny, yeah, I love it. But uh, yeah, he was the first guy I met at at uh, at Notre Dame, which is crazy because because of everything after that sure. with him, and yeah, we were like best buddies. We were like this. We never we played hockey. Maybe we get there in, in what in end of August. Yep. We don't start hockey until October. So until October, you hear how great everybody is, right? And you're right. like, this guy's from British Columbia. This guy's unbelievable. This guy's you know. Yeah. You hear all the stories, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, so I didn't know Brad and. But when we got on the ice, it was like, wow, okay, this is this is pretty cool. Like we were both doing well. We both made the team, the 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 Bantam Triple A team, the yep. only grade nines that did it. So it brought us even closer. That's pretty remarkable, especially considering, like you just said, the careers, the lineage, the fact that you guys started at such a I mean, it just doesn't happen. I don't know too many other stories like that in the no. NHL where two guys started at such a young age, went to school together, played for the same team, both gonna be in the in the team's hall of fame. Yeah. It's it is rather remarkable. Did your brother, because again, when you talk about older brothers going to college, going to school, did he? Is there like a legacy? Like, did he leave like a legacy for you because oh, the Lecavier name in that school was like? Thank, the, thank God. <laughs> did he? Thank okay, so God. He was, he was. You know how tough that school was, yeah. with Kobe. I mean, my brother was a house leader. Okay. So you, you basically ran the dorm. Oh right? wow. In grade, uh, so he took care of all the grade nines. Usually they treat him like crap. Right. And so when I got there in grade nine, all the grade twelves were the guys that my brother took care of uh, yeah. their first year. Sure. Right. Thank my brother's like the best guy in the world. Set it so, up well, for you. Well, if you gotta God. remember, there's like uh it's not like this anymore, but when we went there there was a tradition or a history of hazing mm. that was uh, oh, very, very, I was very to say like know, of like initiations that, that, and, and it kind of it was you know meant come from came from a good place sure. but there was different uh, times man. you know it was different right yeah, so yeah. and it was it was student body led for sure yeah so i mean it was uh, you know you go to sleep at night i mean there's a lot of things going on in that dorm <laughs> so that's insane okay so that obviously that was the the catalyst so to speak to the next level so talk to us about the next level. So you get, you know, you're at the boarding school, you're starting to play hockey, you're making the team. What was the next step after that? After Notre Dame? After Notre Dame. So, I mean, my, my second year at Notre Dame in grade 10, they're like, it's either, you, you kind of have to make a decision. Like, am I going the college route, which my brother was, and, yep. and, and ju- the junior route. But yep. if you if you play one game in junior hockey in Canada, you're, you're not allowed to play in college in the United States. It's a rule. Okay. So I had to make that decision grade 10. And um, I was kind of torn because I wanted. Uh, and your your dad was pushing university too, right? Oh yeah, my dad was pushing university. Uh, but that summer, I went to a uh, a camp in in Boston, and uh, that's when the scouts kind of started talking. They're like, "I think you should go junior. It's kind of like a faster route, a little bit to uh, to the NHL." And they put me at the top of their list and everything. So, uh, anyways, we, I made the decision. I made a pros and cons with my dad. I sent it. I sent it to him, and you know, and we decided to uh, to go the junior route. Nice. But only if this one particular team drafted me, because of how important they thought school was. Like right. they really brought that. You know, they, they had a school right next to the rink, and so my parents again was like, "All right, if you get drafted by this team, you're gonna." You know, you can go play junior. So I was like praying, and they were they were picking fourth overall, and uh, so I went there. Wow! So it all the fate again. Like you willed that into existence almost because again, if you were the fourth round pick, so there was no inkling for the first three well, picks to like maybe pick right, you. Up or, but Brad <laughs> Richards, he was kind of was he involved yeah, like, in this type of decision because he ended up going the well, same route you went too. The right? year, you went the year after. Okay. You the year so after. he saw me. He's like, wait. Like I, I had a great year at 16 and started talking about the draft. He's like, wait, I, I, I feel like I need, to, I need to go major junior as well. So I told, uh, he was kind of like hidden because you're in Saskatchewan. They right. don't know you. They don't right. scout in three hour plane right away. Right. So uh, I told Ramuski, the team I went to, I'm like, hey, you got to go look at, you got to go see him. So they flew to Saskatchewan. They watch him. Like, all right, we're picking him. We're picking seventh <laughs> this year. So uh, nobody really knew about him, and they. Uh, 
Wow. And, you know, you can kind of tell teams, well, I think I'm going junior route, so right. they don't want to waste a first-round pick on somebody that's not coming, right? Sure. Right. That's amazing, though, that you were responsible for bringing him there. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's really cool. And then, yeah, it was Do you great. still razz him about that to this day? Like, if it wasn't for me and I didn't, you Yeah, know, you still be, that, you yeah. still be in Saskatchewan <laughs> somewhere. Yeah, I'm the reason, right, yeah. yeah that's right. <laughs> so that's, uh, I mean, wow, that's a, a pretty remarkable uh, path to kind of get to the junior level. And then, obviously, you proved yourself in the juniors, and yeah. uh, you get drafted by the Lightning back in 1998. Talk to us about that day. Do you remember that day, that that uh, that draft day, and yeah, putting I mean, on the sweater for the first time? It was time? great, and I was happy back then, uh, the night before, but it wasn't a surprise, which when you're 18, you're like, you go to bed. Phyllis Bizzo told me the night, the day before. So yeah. usually they say, like, keep it a surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think he couldn't like- hold it. He's like, I'm drafting you. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, he, he told me the night before I slept like a baby because I'm, I'm sure. like, oh, this is, I'm so excited. And, 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 you know, not, I mean, I was nervous, but not as nervous. Right. right. So, uh, but yeah, it was an amazing day. And, 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 and with Phil and, and, and the, or- the lightning organization and, um, yeah, I mean it's 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 a, it's some some memorable. Right? Absolutely, so, uh, I mean it was a start to a legendary career. Okay, so when you you get drafted and was you come down to Tampa? Was that your first time ever being in Tampa? Yeah, so I came like the week after. Um, first time, I couldn't believe how hot it was. It was like I think it was like July third. <laughs> they made me do like this, um, uh, like a presser. No, like a, what's the what's the the, the Jesus? The, 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 the park, like twenty minutes from here, the the Curtis Hickson Park. No, uh, no, the the, the where you uh, the, there's animals and, and oh, it was, uh, Lowry Park Zoo or no. um, um, Bush Gardens. Bush Gardens. Okay, we sorry, went, sorry. <laughs> sorry, I, had sorry no I lost it. Uh, so we went to Bush Gardens for that. Like it was like a full or half day of like pictures at Bush uh, Gardens okay. with animals. Yeah, I had like sloths on me and like <laughs> it was it was literally 120 degrees. Right. Like it was it was so hot. Anyways, so that was my first day. But we, obviously we did the presser and all that. And um, but yeah, it was kind of it was it wasn't obviously what Tampa is now. No. I mean, as far as city, crazy and, growth. Um, and I was from Montreal, so I kind of knew a little bit the downtown and all yeah, that. Yeah. So it was kind of uh, a, a different, uh, you know, culture uh, and uh, atmosphere hot for hockey. Sure. Right? So, what was the first big purchase you made when you signed that big contract? Uh, I I bought a car, and I was of always car? A, uh, it was a BMW M3. Okay. Nice. So, uh, yeah, I was always into like the the little, you know, the the the, the speed fast stick. cars. Yeah. Stick shift, stick yeah. shift. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, you, you if you have a right? car like that, you better you better invest in the stick shift. Yeah, you yeah. Brought, yeah Ferrari. You still have the Ferrari? No, I don't. You got rid no. of that one. When I walked in front of it about four months in a row because I had three kids. Yeah, yeah. you don't want to drive to school, come back, take the first. <laughs> I mean, you take the Ferrari and get to school. But um, yeah, I, I was always a sports guy and and, and uh, a sports car, car guy. guy. Yeah, and uh, still. What, so what are we driving today? Or is now, it like a minivan? I, I used to be, so now I'm like, no, exactly. <laughs> yeah, now, now I'm a more pickup truck. The okay. last, uh, like it's kind of a 180, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. A little bit. I mean, People a are little like, bit. I just can't, I can't see you in that. And then, you know, but whatever. So you get to Tampa, uh, obviously, again, a young kid, you know, first overall pick. Did you feel that there was a lot of pressure on you uh, to be, you know, the overall pick, the number one overall pick coming into a team that, you know, um, was still a work in progress at that time? Um, there was, but I feel like, um, like usually I think like, let's say you get drafted in Montreal or Toronto. It's like the media kind of right. like, yes, almost overhypes it. And I feel like I didn't have that here, uh, because of, you know, the team wasn't great at all. Right. Um, you know, it wasn't a huge fan base. There wasn't a lot of, uh, a lot, a lot of media. So, um, there was pressure from Canada, but it's, it, it's in Canada. Right. right. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, I put pressure on myself, but I feel the team did, they, they did great. I mean, they put me on the third line the first year with the Jacques Demers was the coach, right. uh, French Canadian, yep. uh, uh, coach. And he just took care of me. Like he, uh, he played me, but you know, he, he, he protected me at the same time. And then, um, uh, just try to kind of steer me in the right direction for that first year and then get used to the, uh, to the league. And, and, but. You know, I, I didn't feel that. I put pressure a lot on myself, but I didn't feel the, the pressure from the lightning itself. Sure. I love to ask this question to guys, but was there any welcome to the NHL moments for you? Like a, a moment or a, a time in a game where you were like, wow, like this is the NHL? Uh, 
probably, I mean, I don't want to say first game. That's kind of like too much. Uh, to me, maybe it was like going into Detroit because they were like a powerhouse team back mm -hmm. then. And that was my team growing up. Right. And you get there and you see the, the Fedorov and Iserman and, and, and McCarty and uh, – uh, you're just impressed. I think that was like the first time I was like, okay, this is Real. these guys are Jack. like. Uh, I watched this guy growing up, and 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 now I'm playing against him. Sure. Two years ago, or was it '97? They won the cup. Um, that was, I think, the most impressed I was that first game, probably in Detroit for sure. So. Vinny, you're part of my welcome to the NHL moment. I don't know if I've oh, ever yeah, told okay. you this, but here we go. So I was playing for the Atlanta Thrashers, and I was set up in a control breakout. So I was behind our net, right? Had okay. the puck. Yep. We're going through our routes, and I see a guy. I think it was like, I think it was, I don't know who it was, maybe Kovalchuk. He was like streaking right down the middle, and I'm thinking, I'm going to step out behind the net here. I'm going to lay a perfect sauce pass right on his tape. Oh, He's going to have a breakaway. This is going. <laughs> and I'm liking so I it. Step I'm out, liking it. I step out, and I. And I, it was a laser beam pass. I thought it was a laser beam pass. And it was about I mean, maybe a foot off the ice, which is tough. And then all of a sudden, I see the stick. Vinny's standing right there. Knocks it down out of midair, right inside our blue line. Grabs it, takes like two steps, wires a slap shot top corner. And I'm like... I look at the, the I look at our bench and Bob Hartley's got his hands on his hips. Oh yeah, he's not happy. <laughs> he is not happy. I just nailed my butt to the to the bench for the rest of that period. Oh my god! And gosh. I remember that was my welcome to the NHL moment. I was like, man, these guys are good. Yeah. You know, this is this is this league is the best league in the world. So, thank you for that. By the way, <laughs> a Bob, revelation. Bob Hartley's like he's nuts too. Eh? No, he, oh my god! It was a it was it was different. So I mean, it was only it was only what uh, two. I mean, you were a season two seasons in to be named one of the youngest captains in the NHL at that time that was like the 2000 2001 season which was your so sophomore season and then you were stripped of that captaincy but then you were you were brought back to the captaincy a few seasons later was that just because of the age factor at that time that they put that on you maybe you weren't ready yeah at, I mean at that time? It's, you're too young in 19 like okay. I, I, fair I, enough to be honest like uh, I, I remember doing interviews even um I mean, I don't want to throw guys in there no, no, no. as well. Yeah, but it's but not like you asked for no, it, right? No. The team bestowed that upon yeah, we, you. Yeah, we were probably the, not probably, we were the youngest, youngest. team by far. And I think um, I was probably one of the guys, obviously, they saw as, you know, as, as growing up yeah. with the Tampa Bay Lightning. But when you're 19 years old, you have no you have no clue. I don't care how good you are. It's not about being a good player, right? right. It's about, uh, and I think you learned that more. And I, I, Kobe, I'm sure you... Uh, you know, you learned that leadership skills as well through looking at older guys and what they do. And we yeah. didn't, you know, we had that my first year, but we were, you know, we we're kind of a losing, losing, uh, losing team. And it's still, uh, anyways, I was too young, but I feel like I realized that when I went to like, uh, you know, to Philly and then LA, you know, watching guys like Kopitar, um, a guy that's, you know, he's been a leader for 10 years, 30 years old. You know, you go through a, you, you go through things as a team. You win together. You you, you bring guys together. You're. Yeah, I just feel like 19 or or before 25. I, I feel you don't have enough um, no, experience. Experience. Um, Leadership. Like you haven't. I, I just don't think you've seen enough to, yeah. to really to, to be that that person. Uh, it, it does still happen, and I think you know good players are. You know they put their cap in seats. They know they're going to be there for a long time. But I think you know, they allow a, guys around them to help them out a lot too. Yeah, right? sure. you have to, and uh, I say that too now. I mean, um, that was actually Guy Boucher that brought it up. He's like, no, there's not one guy. It's like, hey, there's the group of like the seven leaders, and you need more than one guy right. to push in that in that direction to to be a winning team. And that's what you know. Obviously, Stammer's a great is a great leader. You need guys around you. Right. You need you need guys to everybody pushing the right direction and keep each other accountable and, and uh, inspire guys. Um, uh, you know, the, you don't have to break a stick in between the periods. And, uh, right. you know, if you show by example, uh, that's good too. Some leaders are like that. Some guys are more uh, talking in the room, talking to young guys, doing different things. So um, that's why I think you need to be more than, more than one, right? Absolutely. So another tidbit that I thought was interesting was um, after we won the cup, you – during the lockout year, actually, you went over to play in Russia yeah. with Hobby Bullen and, and Richie. Talk to us about that whole experience. Because, again, 
you're coming off of winning the Stanley Cup in 2004. You think you're going to, in the next season, you're going to be able to defend your cup, and then that doesn't happen. What was the deci- What went into the decision to say, I'm going to go over and play in well, Russia? It was, it was the end of October. I'm like, I cannot stand this right now. I need to play hockey. Okay. It was like so an itch. Like I'm it- like, I don't care. Uh, so my agent's like, all right, I got uh, Milan in Italy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. <laughs> Which, you know, the level wasn't that great. Right. And I got uh, maybe Russia. I'm like, okay, um, it's a great league. I mean, there's good players, but, you know, you, you go to Russia. And then right. I started calling guys. I can't remember who I called. They said, he was talking about Kazan. So I called uh, Freddie Brathwaite, who was, a, who was a goalie. He's like, Vinny. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> he wanted me to go so, so bad because he was the only Canadian there yeah. with all the Russians. <laughs> so uh, anyways, he, he, he sold me and Richie on it. And, uh, you know, we went, we went to Russia and I mean, it's, it's a different world. You go to Moscow, you think you're in Russia, then you fly out of Moscow to go to Kazan. They're like, okay, this is Russia. (laughs) So, uh, bigger culture shock, Saskatchewan or Kazan. Yeah, I know. (laughs) But, uh, I mean, I, I had a good experience. Like yeah. R- Richie hated it right from the get-go, the first two How weeks. How long were you there? I was there for six months until oh, the end wow. of the year. Okay. And uh, I, it, great experience. The culture was, uh, I, I mean, I didn't love it. I didn't, I mean, I missed. Language barrier? Uh, I mean, how did you? Oh, play? yeah, everything. But okay. I, I was kind of lucky. We had like Kovachuk, like a couple guys, like uh, NHL guys that took so, care of me on that yeah. team. So very lucky. Uh, but the culture and, and it's just so different every day. Me and Freddie were like, we're just shaking our heads. We're like, how, how, well, where how, are we? Right? Where are we? And how is this happening? And, you know what I mean, I mean, so how so, does that work with the, with your contract and you're playing for the NHL, but they're in a lockout. So is there a loophole within the, within no, the, no, you're allowed. Yeah. You're you can okay. go play where you want. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. that the same yeah. thing with the Olympics? I mean, it all kind of falls under that same Olympic. Cause I mean, you played for the Olympics too in 2006 team Canada. So, I mean, well, the NHL at the time was. It was cool with that, right? And now they're kind so of So it was not... 2004, 2005, and then the Olympics was uh, after the other year. So they I came back. 06. I came back here, and then they picked a team, and, and um, yeah. You've had some amazing experiences in your career. I mean, from Yeah, I mean, Olympics just from Russia. Saskatchewan, I mean, that's, like, I mean, that's uh, starting there. I think it kind of. Sasky uh, boys, as you say. Oh, yeah, Sasky boys. <laughs> honorary, <laughs> honorary, honorary, yeah. Sasky honorary, honorary, man. man. I mean, I know we're getting close to running out of time, Kobe. Um, let's talk real quick um, about your new position. Um, you're a special advisor for hockey operations for the Montreal Canadiens. You're joining Marty St. Louis. Is Teddy Purcell doing some stuff? With Teddy's him? doing, yeah. Teddy's doing oh, some yeah. stuff. I, I mean, we've had Teddy he's on scouting, earlier. Yeah. He's scouting so, in, the, in the West. Okay, so, yeah, tell us about how that whole uh, situation came to be and, like, are you Marty's boss or is like, no. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like what's, no, I, I'm not. <laughs> so uh, yeah, give us the rundown. So can we, can we go with that though? Can yeah, we, we can. We run yeah, that? I guess. Yeah. Okay. I'm his boss. All right. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. I mean, Ken Hughes is my agent for 20 years and mm-hmm. we're, we're, you know, we're, we're good friends. We're best friends. And he's uh, right before he got the job. He's like, if I go there, will you help out? Mm-hmm. At first I'm like, ah, you know, I got three young kids and I didn't know the level of, uh, commitment sure. uh for traveling and all that and i'm like I, I, i'm like first of all i'm not moving to montreal because we're here we're right. down here i love tampa love and, that uh but um anyways I, I i i took the job and it's 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 perfect i mean uh, i i deal directly with with kent and uh you know if there's trades going on or players that he wants and uh, a big thing for me is the draft and yep uh, knowing the top 50 guys uh, for the draft, which, you know, I go to Europe in, uh, in April and U- U18 and, um, you know, we, all the scouts do their own list and yep. I do my own list. So okay. it's, uh, that's a big part of it. And you got to be ready because you're going to those meetings at the, before the draft and there's a lot of debates and a lot on, on different players. We're like, hey, if we're picking, last year we're picking fifth, right? So if we're picking fifth, there's these four guys here. Like, so we're debating. And um, wow. so anyways, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, something I love doing and I can still be in Tampa and, and coach my son and caddy for my two daughters to play golf. And um, so... You know, I have that, and I can still, you know, help out and 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 do things with uh, with Montreal. You talk to Marty a, a lot about. I that do stuff not or? not a lot. I mean, yeah. uh, I, I, honestly, I deal more with with uh, with Kent and management than yeah. uh, than the coaching. I mean, Marty's got a lot on his plate. I mean, he's. Uh, uh, he's dealing directly with the players. It's tough for me to be in in, in Tampa and and say, hey, uh, this guy or yeah, you know I mean, like right. you're, I'm not in the, uh, I'm not in the locker room first of all, and you know how it is. I mean, you're 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 
you got to be in there, sure. right? So, um, do you get in training camp and stuff? Do you get an opportunity to go down and yeah, talk yeah, to the guys? Yes, and- yeah, yes. So training camp, uh, uh, development camp. So right after we draft the guys, get to know them. Um, you know, obviously the trade deadline. I'm there, and uh, so, so you know the important dates. I'm in. I'm in Montreal, but uh, and obviously the draft wherever it is. But um, it, it's perfect. I love it for me right now and in, 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 in my life. It's the 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 perfect thing. I'm in hockey. I love it. And I've never watched that much hockey in my life. Right. <laughs> so, so know, what but, about what about down the road? Are any aspirations to become a general manager or anything like that? Uh, honestly, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not even there to think about that. Um, just honestly, just from my kids being 13, 12, and sure. ten. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it's a big commitment. I mean, I see it with Kent, and I see it with with everybody else, and. Um, and just like Marty, being a coach is a huge commitment, way more than a player. Sure. Way more, I think. Yeah. Um, so I'm not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> but you never know. So maybe never yeah. say never. I yeah. mean, no, I never, say, okay. yeah, never say never. So, I mean, as a dad, uh, as an athlete, before we get into our factor fiction, um, you mentioned your kids and, and they play sports. It, was that important to you that your kids played, you know, organized sports or did they just kind of gravitate to that because that's, you know, what they want to do? Uh, I want to say I kind of steer them. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's <laughs> you're allowed. I mean, you're allowed. Uh, that was a pro athlete. I mean, yeah. So obviously hockey. I mean, I brought my son on the ice uh, when he was young, yep. and and in golf, I love golf. So I brought my daughter in Philly. There's this little 18 hole, like 30, 40 yard greens or whatever. Like, uh, so I kind of steered them in, in things I I like to do as well. Sure. Um, I don't know if that is that wrong or no. I mean, <laughs> no, but, I don't uh, think that's wrong at all. But you know they love it, so they're now they're my, my two girls are competing, and my my son, uh, you know, he's playing travel hockey, and I'm coaching, so um, uh, you know that's that's fun. Okay, yeah, loving it. All right, so Vinny, before we uh, we let you get out of here, we do a segment every uh, show uh, presented by Highlight. It's called Fact or Fiction. It's really these are either true statements or not true statements. So you got to let us know. Is this true or not? Fact or fiction. So let's start it off. Fact or fiction, Vinny. After every game, you needed to get a massage. <laughs> Fact. <laughs> so, I mean, I talked to Bill Wicked on this one. He said Vinny was on the table a lot, he said. But, I mean, that obviously allowed you to get... I like a get- zipper to take off my clothes just to get a, like, the leg massage out there. But it worked. They're I mean, obviously, burning. 17 seasons in the league. I mean, that was his... Uh, that was him out. That was a fact. Okay. All right. Kobe's got one. So you received an Emmy for your portrayal of Jean Beliveau in The Rocket, the Maurice Richard story. And ever since then, Hollywood agents have been knocking down your door for you to become a, a movie to- star. Totally fiction. <laughs> <laughs> but you did play that role in that movie. I did, yeah. I was in there for three seconds. <laughs> okay. No further future uh, acting no. aspirations. <laughs> that is completely fiction. All right. EA Sports video game NHL 08 featured you as the cover athlete. Uh, fiction. I think it was 06. It right? was 06. My man knows All his right. stuff, man. All right, Kobe, you got one? All right. So you are a big history buff, uh, and you have an especially, uh, you love Chinese Inzu, so Chinese characters. You have a, a, a strong, <laughs> a strong uh, love of Chinese characters. Fact or fiction? Fiction? Or fact. <laughs> well, if someone has one to- tattooed on their body, I would think they would love it a little bit. Yeah, there's a tattoo yeah, on your body? I took it off. <laughs> okay, so, wait, what's the story on this? Nah, there's no story. The next. <laughs> so, the, <laughs> next. Okay, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Okay. You got one more? <laughs> All right. Vinny LeCavier is good for one good golf club throw per round. All right. <laughs> Maybe the old Vinny. Okay, so I'll say fact. Okay. <laughs> Not anymore. I'm a okay. changed guy. You're a changed. He's a reformed. <laughs> Who said that? The Richie? Who gave me that one? I cannot Can reveal my sources now? here. I right. cannot reveal sources. All right, so we're going to let you wrap up with that one. All right, so <laughs> Bolts Nation, uh, an amazing episode once again here on the Block Party. Vinny, we, we thank you so much. Congratulations uh, on all the success and, uh, you know, having your number in the rafters and, and being a part of the first inaugural uh, Lightning Hall of Fame class. It's, uh, it's remarkable. We love you. I know the city loves you, and uh, we wish nothing but the best in your thank future you so endeavors. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. Bolts Nation, uh, we've got another amazing episode of the Block Party. 
coming up next week. But we thank Vinny LeCavier for being on here once again. Thanks to our friends at High Ally. You guys have a great week.